What's up, everybody? I hope you all had a great day today. Getting into this episode of GH, um, I enjoyed the scenes with Anna and Valentine. I always do. Um, so some little chick, I guess, is the point person for Valentine that he had to call to help um, them sneak into Victor's compound or whatever to rescue Lucy. Some chick from his past name, Renee. So he used to do little jobs with her back in the day or whatever. He did it for the money. She did it for the thrills. Um, so she comes up in the room, bypasses Anna, and goes directly to hugging and kissing on Valentine. I'm looking at her with a side eye like, um, ma'am, get, get up off him. He's not single anymore. Get off of him. Like, you better be lucky that Anna's already in the run. Otherwise, she'll beat your ass. Like, get up off of him. You know, kissing all up on him and stuff. I say, Anna, you're not going to drag her? Like, she kissing on your man. Like, get this heifer. You need to snatch her. Um... So basically, you know, Valentine called her to help out with that. And she was like, yeah, I can help y'all get in or whatever. Um, Anna doesn't trust her. Right off the bat, Anna does not trust her. Um, you know, Valentine admitted that he had relations with her back in the day. You know, they weren't just business associates. You know, they, they messed around back then. But he was like, I ain't thinking about her. That's long over. Um, but, you know, that's what I love about Anna. Because I don't really think Anna's in, She's not an insecure person. You know what I'm saying? She's definitely not sweating, you know, a woman from his past. I mean, come on. Valentine wasn't a hermit, you know. Like, come on now. Like, the man got it in. Um, He has a past just like everybody has a past. So, it is what it is. So, I'm glad, you know, she wasn't really tripping about it. Um, But she definitely did not trust Renee. You know, but Valentine felt like they didn't have a choice but to trust her because she's the only person that he could call on such short notice to help them. And, of course, Anna is a good judge of character for the most part. Sometime because she called it. Renee is not somebody that you want to trust because right after Renee left, she met up with one of Victor's people and pretty much wanted to know what the price would look like for, you know, to serve up Anna and Valentine on a silver platter. How much money could she possibly make from that? Um, And she set them up because she pretty much went back to Anna and Valentine and was like, oh, I could get y'all into the compound. Everything's arranged. For y'all to breach it or whatever. I said, you know what, you little heifer. I hope they I hope they kill you. <laughs> I hope they take her ass out. I was like, Anna was right not to trust her little ass. Um, so now that's you know, now they gotta deal with her shady self. Um, and it looks to me like Anna and Valentine are walking smack dab into a trap. Hopefully they get out alive. You know what I'm saying? Like hopefully they get out unscathed. Um, but Noah, Anna, and Valentine, they're, they're very crafty. So I, I'm, I'm loving this little side mission with them. Like this little side storyline with them trying to rescue Lucy. I love it. It's like they're in their own little world and I'm, and I'm here for it. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. So Spencer knows that he needs help. You know what I'm saying? He cannot take on Nicholas by himself. That's like David versus Goliath. He's not, you know, it's, it's, he's outmatched. So, of course, he's calling in the big guns, Ava. Smart move. Very smart. So, you know, him and Ava meet up, and Ava quickly tells him that, you know, she plans on taking Windermere in the divorce. Spencer really didn't give a damn. He was like, listen, all I care about right now is getting that child away from Nicholas and Esme. That's all I give a damn about. And, you know, he told her. He was like, I'm in for a fight because he knows this is not going to be an easy win. And even Ava told him that. You know, Nicholas is going to, you know, come after you like he's going to sling dirt at you. It's not going to be easy. And she was like, you know, when Nicholas plays dirty, you're going to need somebody who, who can get low, who can, you know, go low with him and play dirty. Um, So, of course, she was like me, you know, I'm going to help you. I love this. Ava and Spencer teaming up. I'm here for it because this is going to be the ultimate revenge, not only for Spencer, but for Ava. If they could pull this off, it's, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle. But with Ava on his side, I think he definitely can. Um, and Ava was curious how Trina was going to take all this. And of course, Trina don't know. And Ava told him, she was like, listen, you gotta, you you have to tell Trina. Like, you're not going to keep this from her. You need to tell her what's going on here. And I agree. He definitely does. Because you're not going to sit here and leave Trina out in the cold and not tell her what the hell is going on. But I'm here for this little team up of Ava and Spencer. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see what they can do together. You know what I mean? If they could make some strides in this and take Nicholas' ass down a notch. Hopefully they can, because I'm here for it. So anyway, moving on from that. You know, Nina's all gung-ho about getting more tests done and stuff because she wants to save Willow. You know, Sonny pretty much like trying to calm her down. Like, listen, relax. Um, I feel like Nina 
I don't feel like she's going to be a total match. I feel like they're setting this up. Maybe she's not going to be a perfect match for Willow and she might not be able to donate. I feel like that might be where it's going to go. Um, and she probably going to be devastated and stuff and whatnot. I don't know. I just feel like it's not going to go the way Nina thinks it's going to go. Maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, she was asking TJ what the next steps are. And he was basically like, well, she's going to have to get birth first. Willow's going to have to get birth. Um, then they're going to have to do another round of chemo and then start trying to do the transplant and whatnot. Um, you know, Willow is pretty much telling TJ, like, she's ready to induce, you know, she's ready to give birth and move on to the next level of this thing and, um, fight it, you know, and get the donation and continue on with her life. Um, Michael is still pissed because he felt like at the end of the day, this could have all been solved a lot sooner had they would have known sooner. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, he's still pissed at, at Carly. And he pretty much told Carly, like, listen, get up, get out of here. Don't, don't, you know, we ain't got time for this right now. But, you know, Willow wanted to talk to Carly. And, of course, Carly's apologetic and, you know, saying, oh, had I known then what I know now, I would have came forward and said something. And I'm glad Michael got his foot on her neck at this point. Like, Michael and Sonny is not letting Carly get away with this. Like, they're keeping their foot on her neck. Like, they're holding her accountable. Because she keeps trying to say, oh, I was trying to protect Willow. And Michael said, that's bullshit. He was like, no, you did this shit out of revenge. And she keeps trying to deny it. I'm like, at the end of the day, Michael and Sonny know her very well. They know her best. You know what I'm saying? They know how she operates. And they know that this was not her trying to protect Willow. Do I think she cares about Willow? Yeah. But this was revenge. Plain and simple. And my thing is, I really don't give a damn that Carly did this. My thing is, own it. If you're going to do some wicked shit, own that shit. Stand on it. You know, don't keep sitting there hiding behind somebody or some delusion. No, own why you did it. And it was flat out revenge. Take ownership of it. Um, I could respect the person more when they own their shit. You know what I mean? Like, don't sit here and lie about it. Own that. So her and Willow was talking alone or whatever. And I'm not surprised that Willow is forgiving Carly. I'm not shocked. I'm like, of course, Willow could forgive everybody but Nina. Um, she, Willow could forgive the devil himself <laughs> before she would forgive Nina. Like she don't give a damn. But I will say when she mentioned how Nina took everything from Carly, like, you know, her marriage, her business and stuff. I do agree with Carly. Like Nina didn't take anything from her. And I totally agree with Carly on that. And I'm glad she at least knows that because for one, Sonny's a grown ass man. You can't take somebody from someone else. You can't. Sonny willingly chose to be with Nina. That's That was his choice. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad she sees it that way because that's what it was. He's a grown man. You can't take some someone. He willingly left. And as far as the Metro Court, Nina didn't take the Metro Court. Carly took a big gamble. She took a risk like most people in business do. She gambled and she lost. Even if Nina didn't buy the Metro Court, somebody else was going to buy it. So either way, Carly wasn't going to get it back. So I'm glad that she sees that. You know what I'm saying? That she's not blaming Carly for it. Like, oh, you know, Carly's not blaming Nina for it. Like, oh, she took this from me. You know, at least she's transparent about that. I'm like, because it would be a whole lie. Nobody took nothing from you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Both those things left. That's just what it is. Um, but yeah, you know. Michael pretty much told Willow, like, he's at that point where he feels like he can't forgive Carly, you know, for what she did. And I'm glad he holding her ass accountable for it, you know, and Carly sitting here trying to manipulate, you know, emotionally manipulate him, talking about some, oh, I know you have forgiveness in your heart. Is there any for me? Like, Carly, go sit down. Now ain't the time for all that mess. It is not the time to talk about forgiveness. You need to go have a sit down. We'll talk about your forgiveness later. Go <laughs> Like, for real, go sit down now. We can't talk about that today. You know, so Willow summons Sonny to her room. You know, her and Sonny have a sit down. And she pretty much wanted to tell Sonny that if she doesn't make it, that she wants him to do everything in his power to make things right with Michael. Um, Because she feels like they're going to need each other, you know, especially if she's gone. I'm like, my whole thing is, though, Sonny, as a parent, I don't think he's ever going to really give up on Michael, but it's a two-way street. Michael's a grown man, you know what I'm saying? And Sonny can only do but so much because my thing is, even as a parent, my approach to it is I'm willing to own up to things. I'm willing to try to fix things. But at the same time, if that person is not what I, I'm big on this, what I will not do, and I don't give a damn who it is in the world, 
I'm not kissing nobody's ass to get along with them. I'm just not big on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I will apologize and own my shit. But if you still want to reject me, then it is what it is. I'm not going to kiss your ass just to make nice with you. Absolutely not. That's not going down. And I don't think Sonny should. You know, he can apologize to Michael or try to make amends with him until he's blue in the face. At the end of the day, if Michael still rejects it, why keep begging? You know what I'm saying? At that point, it's Michael's move. <laughs> like, I wouldn't make Willow any promises. Like, no, the move is on him at that point. He's a grown man, you know? It is what it is. So, moving on from that, we get to Nut Job City. <laughs> um, Spring Ridge with Heather and Esme. So, Heather pretty much wanted so bad to tell Esme that she was her mother, but she refrained from doing it. She was like, nah, now's not the right time because Esme got memory loss. So, she just told her, oh, I want to be your friend and stuff like that. Um, so, pretty much the judge sent Esme to Spring Ridge until her trial concludes. Um, he, the judge pretty much called her a menace to society. <laughs> And Esme told me, oh, I don't understand why ever since I woke up in the hospital, everybody's been hating me and da 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 da. Um, you know, and she's wondering why Heather wants to be her friend and, you know, just trying to put the pieces together. I'm like, well, ma'am, you, you can't like and nowadays in jail, you can't find ways to Google thyself, like find a way you got guards in there that's willing to give you some type of technology or something ask the guards like why people hate you um so you know heather start going into the spill about her own kids and stuff like that told my oh she's in prison basically she's in spring ridge and stuff because she loved too much girl you in spring ridge because you're nuts that's why you're in spring ridge don't sit here and try to sugarcoat and downplay what you did your ass is crazy that's why you're in spring ridge <laughs> you're a nutball that's why they they threw your ass in there locked you up um, she told my oh, she had two sons. One is in prison. One is dead. And then she got a daughter that was taken from her. Um, so, you know, she was trying to give Esme a heads up of people to avoid. And Heather, I feel like, is playing a dangerous game because she told Esme to avoid Ryan. I'm like, Heather, Miss Man, Ryan already want to take your ass out. Like, you really want to keep playing with him? Because now if he find out, and you know he probably will, that you told Esme to steer clear of him... He not going to hesitate to take you out. Like, Ryan is that crazy. Like, he already, she already tap dancing on his last nerve as it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he barely got one nerve left. Like, you really want to keep playing with him? <laughs> Heather may be crazy, but Ryan's more dangerous and more crazy. You really want to fuck with him right now? Like, you saw the way he looked at her yesterday when she closed that door to his room and he had that menacing look. Like, you see the way he would be looking at her. Like, if he felt like he didn't need her at the moment, he would have took her ass out a long time ago. Like, you treading on thin ice right now, Ms. Weber. You might want to chillax. <laughs> you might want to calm it down. Uh, Ryan's not the one to test. I'm just saying. You know, you keep trying to put him to the test and you keep thinking he won't take you out. Miss Ma'am, you might want to mm, tone it down. Uh, <laughs> like, Ryan ain't the one. Um, So... Esme made some comment about her baby or whatever. I think getting rid of it or something like that. And Heather like grabbed her wrist and stuff like that. Telling her, oh, don't say that. And, you know, Esme was creeped out by that. She was like, um, you're hurting me. Get away from me. <laughs> like Heather. Mm. Good luck to, to Esme. I mean, it's bad enough having Ryan as a father, but Heather Weber is your mama. Oh, God. Listen, at this point, child protective services need to come and monitor that baby because as soon as she get birth, they need to come take that baby automatically because I'm like, absolutely not. That baby going to have a fucked up family tree on that side. On the mama side, on Esme side, that family tree going to be all fucked up. I'm just saying. Like, crazy just running their DNA. I feel bad for the child. Um, Hopefully, somebody get custody. But, I mean, the candidate says going for custody right now. Mm, I wouldn't get them custody of a pet monkey, let alone a child. <laughs> I'm just saying, Spencer not ready. Nicholas is dumb. Like, no. Mm -mm. Nope. Y'all not ready. Y'all are not ready. Y'all not ready to look at a child, let alone take care of one. Absolutely not. Um, But anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought. And I will see you all later. Have a great night. Peace.